when I'm talking and then, you know, look Intent. towards the camera, Nine. you know, catch different. Eight. Cool. Yeah, Seven. just speak as natural as you can. <laughs> One, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Drag Show. I'm Stu Smith, and to my right is the one and only Miss Edie Modular. Hi. Welcome, Thank Edie. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having dropping me. by. No problem. We don't usually get anybody with such beautiful blonde hair oh. and such a radiant smile. It's the nicest hair money can buy. <laughs> so, Edie, tell me about uh, your life in drag. My life in drag. Um, well, I started doing drag when I was really young, probably about f four or five. Um, there was actually, this story may or may not be true. My best friend, I knew her since the day she was born, and I was about four or three years old, and I was playing with her Barbies, and I was playing with her mom's makeup. And her mom walked in on me playing with her makeup and just stormed out. She's like, I'm telling your mother. And I was like, <laughs> white. And then my mom came to pick me up, and I look at my mom, and I go... Mom, can I have a Barbie? And she looks down at me and she goes, Do you just want me to chop your penis off while we're at it? <laughs> and walks away and she's really upset. My parents are amazing. My parents are absolutely amazing. I love them. They're the most supportive people in the world. Um, but I don't think they were prepared. And then the older I got, um, every day after school, I would come home and wear my mom's Betsy Johnson dresses <laughs> before they, she got home from work. So. And was it's, this in Baltimore? Uh, Virginia Florida? Beach, Virginia. Uh -huh. That's where I was born and raised. And then I moved to Baltimore when I was 18 to go to art school. Okay. Yeah, I was a printmaking major. And okay, Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I read that somewhere. Uh, you've got a lot of different career aspirations and experiences. Uh, a chain of all trades and uh -huh. master of none, really, yes, I would that's, say. That's a pretty good way to live. Yeah, it's I fun. Think, never a dull know, moment. You're never uh, done learning. Mm -mm. Teachability is a great asset. You've talked a little bit about food in the past, and mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by food. I write about food, and I know that you're really, really passionate about it. Oh, you write about it? Yeah. Oh, sweet. But I, I'd love <laughs> to hear some of your ideas. I mean, I, I think that you've got some ideas about um, your persona being in some kind of a talk show format, or book. Sort of. Uh, you're already doing books, I think, right? Well, I'm working on a series of cookbook scenes. I put out the first one last summer. I'm working on a second one now. It's going to be more um, more in-depth. It's going to be essays. It's going to be restaurant reviews. It's going to be recipes. Um, it's called Stuff to Put in Your Mouth. The CD Modular Stuff that. to Put in Your Mouth. Um, I just think food is really important. I think it's really, really important. And I think it is long overdue to see um, a drag persona have sort of a food-related show that isn't pure camp, actually has like a serious side to it. It's, you know, it should be funny and entertaining. Um, but, you know, I think food is something to be taken seriously. And I think that, you know, especially like politically today, it's getting a lot of attention um, uh -huh. about how it's treated and how it's, you know, produced and consumed. And I think America needs, like there's never enough fingers pointing in the right directions in America. Um, I think food is so, interesting you know you put food in front of someone and they can have nothing in common they can come from completely different parts of the world have absolutely nothing in common but you put food in front of them and they have something in common they have mm -hmm. something to talk about um and you know it bonds people you can look at what people are eating and what cultures are eating and you can tell where they're from and where they're going and it's it's just I, it's fascinating i definitely have a passion for it what did you uh, do you what do you think of uh, the career of uh, Julia Child? Oh, she's one of the most incredible women of all time. Um, I love her. She was so non-apologetic. She was a trailblazer. She's, she was a very brave woman. Yeah, um, that's what I love so much about her. She was, um, she was just, you know, she was a pioneer. She did her own thing. She marched to the beat of her own drum. And I think that is one of the most important qualities a person can have is, you know, like fierce independence. You know, doing what you really feel you were put on this planet to do and really not giving, you know, a rat's butt about what other people think of it. <laughs> yeah, I loved her show. I still watch it and rerun sometimes, and I, I just love it. She was an amazing personality. Uh, so if you were to have a show right now, I mean, is there a specific type of food? Are you into uh, vegetarian or... You know? No. <laughs> Vegetarianism... 
depresses me. Um, <laughs> there's the only two things in the world that I won't eat are turtle and frog. I will eat anything else. I will try it all. Um, and you know, I food is like a food is like a tool for bonding people. You know, is sort of like the approach I always try to take to it. So learning and eating the foods of other cultures is super important. So I would never um, just hone in on one thing in particular. Um, I'm obsessed with Spanish food and I'm obsessed with um, Filipino food recently has been something I've been really, really interested in. Um, they have a lot in common, you know, heavily influenced from, you know, like you can look at it, it's like, you know, the whole Spanish history of the Philippines, it's like, it's there in their food. You know, yeah. you pay close enough attention, you can see the, you know, bonds, you know, the, the ties that bind, I guess. Well, any restaurants that, that you particularly like in San Francisco? Um, Oh yeah, this is the best city in the country to want to eat in. I think I even better, even more so than New York. Um, the best food I have ever tasted in my entire life is um, probably prepared at Boulette's Larder in the Ferry Building. Okay, it's yeah, incredible. The chef Emerald Shortner is a genius. Um, I think Range on Valencia Street is amazing. Um, I think Yet Wa out on Clement and twenty. 3rd, 24th is like the best dim sum on earth. It's an incredible. Uh, oh, I could go like on and on and on and on and on. As per Pinto, 122nd is incredible. So now you people who would like <laughs> to be mentioned or to have a consultation with this one unique personality, you know how to reach her. I think, do you have a website? Um, no. Do you? How do, how, how, <laughs> Not yet, I'm working on it. How does one reach you? Um, people can email me at edmodular at yahoo.com they can look me up on facebook i'm pretty easy to find i get emails pretty regularly from people i haven't met have, yeah. who asking me like where they should eat in town that's great which is awesome i love my opinion you know? <laughs> i love my opinion i love it when people come after my opinion or, do you yelp at all um no I am still not sure whether or not I think Yelp is like Yelp. Yelp is wonderful. It can, but it, it's. I don't know. It's like you can only take so much of it with more than a grain of salt. You know. Oh, I, I agree so with that. So it's kind of scary. You can really make or break someone's career, and so, and eh, I don't know. If I, I use Yelp as a discipline. Uh, I write. I don't want to. I I write food reviews and have for quite a few years. But I don't want to slash anybody, mm. you know, so I do some reviews.